Oh my god, what is this craziness? What is this madness? What is this magic? Hello everyone, my name is Kays and welcome to another Right Brain Tutorial. So first things first, Happy New Year. I know, I know, it's already February and this is the first time that I had like a little bit of free time, but I did want to show you guys some of the latest things happening in 3D Lite because 3D Lite just released a new update and it's really, really cool and it's really exciting and it's got some really, really cool new functionalities. So let me show you a little bit what I'm talking about with some of these new things in 3D Lite. All right, so here we are in Houdini and I have, uh, you know, like a basic uh, kind of scene that I was working on. And uh, this is kind of got like a pretty decent amount of geometry and it's even got like a VDB for some uh, distant fog. And anyway, it's got like a lot of stuff. So one of the cool new things that you've seen in the preview of, you know, portion of this video is the ability now to have rendering happening right here in the Houdini viewport. And the way you do it, you just go into your out context and 3D Lite now provides a brand new uh, ROP, which is called a 3D Lite viewport ROP, okay? And this is really, really cool because all you have to do is just instance it in your out context and then just hit render. And give it a second and look at this. Now we have 3D light operating right into our viewport. And this is really, really cool. And we can of course move around and you know, like uh, it, this is gonna come in handy, especially when you need to do some uh, adjustments in your geometry position and maybe you're doing like uh, some uh, tweaks uh, to your textures and so on and so forth and you want to be able to do it right here into the viewport as opposed to doing it in a separate window. And as far as I know, this is the only third party render engine that allows you to do this. So this is really, really neat. All right, so what else is new in this latest 3D light? We now finally have a skylight, okay? So this is a Hoosix Wilkes uh, kind of uh, emulation of what a sky would look like. Uh, both during the day and at sunset or sunrise and this is the same model that Houdini uses internally so it's just kind of tapping into the same algorithm to define what the sky looks like and it's really really cool so I mean basically we have our uh, light uh, functions right here um, and uh, one of the cool things that we have is also we have settings for sun, sky, and ground, which is really, really cool. So let me show you what that looks like in the render. I'm just gonna hit render right here. And right now you're gonna see that we have our geometry being shown, but we can't really see the sky in the background and we do wanna see some sky in the background. So all you have to do is just enable it right here where it says render light geometry, just kind of uh, click on this checkbox and we're just going to hit refresh here and now all of a sudden we have our sky dome that is being rendered along with our geometry and we can kind of like change uh, the angles in this case uh, just switch this to azimuth and elevation and all of a sudden we can kind of uh, rotate uh, things around so we can kind of light it from different parts um, you know so maybe we want to go like I don't know but one of the cool things about this is that we can actually see the sun itself. So here, let me just kind of rotate this so that it's backlit right now. And I just need to lower the elevation of the sun. I'm just gonna change it to say something like five. Oh, there it is. Let me bring it over just a little bit. So now we actually have the sun in the sky as well, which is really, really cool. And of course, like the lower it gets to the horizon, uh, the more sunsetty or sunrise so everything kind of gets very very warm and the higher up it is in the sky like you know 90 degrees now it's going to feel very much like midday now the other cool thing that we have here let me let me lower the sun again so we can kind of see it uh, we can also change the size of the sun so the angular size right now is set to one but we can make it two so now we have like a slightly larger sun we can go crazy make it like five so now we have this really really large sun uh, okay, and the other cool thing that we can do is change the haziness and uh, turbidity of the sky itself. So in the sky tab, uh, we can make the haziness 
zero, so now it's going to be like um, a very, very clear sort of day. Um, so the, the sky does not contain any particles or anything like that that kind of would give it some sort of haziness. But we can increase the haziness quite a bit. Let's go all the way up to 10. And now you can kind of see the sky is looking a little bit more, you know, like muddy. Um, same thing with the brightness. We can kind of adjust the brightness of the sky. So this is going to uh, bounce the light around our sky dome a lot more. And here, let me just kind of make the sun a little bit lower once more. And I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to change uh, the sky haziness. So now it's it's very diffused. All of a sudden we can't even like really see the sun quite very well, but it's just kind of giving you this kind of very, very hazy kind of day. Now we don't have any ground right here. This is just like the, the kind of standard uh, kind of brown ground color that you get, as I said, from the Houdini model. But, uh, but of course, you know, you can just kind of create a ground and then it's going to light all your stuff very properly. And this is really, really cool. And it's going to come in handy for a lot of situations where you don't necessarily want to use an HDRI or you don't want to use like specific lights, but you still want like a very natural uh, way of lighting your scene. All right, so what else can we do in this new latest version of 3D Light? Well, uh, some of you who might have seen my VDB, uh, rendering VDBs in 3D Light tutorial that I did a while back know that uh, dealing with uh, VDBs and rendering them in 3D Light was always a bit of a clunky process. Uh, let's say that you were running a simulation in Houdini, you had to convert the simulation into VDB, then you had to save those VDBs, uh, then you had to like bring the VDB back into uh, your Houdini session, except uh, you know without uh, too many nodes attached to it, or else it would kind of screw up 3D Light, and only then you were able to render out a VDB in 3D Light. Well, fret no more, the process has just gotten a lot simpler. So uh, let's do something here. I'm just going to click on the Simple VFX tab. I'm just going to select the Simple uh, Billowy Smoke. I'm just going to place it right here at my zero point. Uh, let's orient the camera a little bit and just kind of let it run through the simulation. So you can see we have a uh, basic kind of smoke going here in Houdini. Uh, I'm just going to add a camera right now and let's just kind of reframe it a little bit. Okay, here we go. That's a little bit better. And I'm just going to add uh, some um, a point light just to give us a little bit of light somewhere in here. So now what we need to do is we need to assign a uh, material to our smoke source. So I'm just going to go under material. I'm just going to click here under 3D light and assign ooh, a VDB volume. Okay, so this is going to be our material smoke source render and VDB volume, okay. And now all I have to do is hit render and look at this. We have smoke being rendered in 3D Light without having to jump through all the different hoops that we had to jump through before. Right now it's going a little bit slow because I have in my material my um, multiple scattering set to one, which is a lot of different bounces so if I uh, make it uh, 0.1, it's going to go a lot quicker. And of course, right now the smoke's a little too thick, so we can kind of adjust the density. Uh, and anyway, you know, at that point, you have access to all of the different uh, VDB material settings, including transparency, emission, grids, and so on and so forth. But this is really, really cool because it allows you to deal with VDBs a lot quicker, a lot faster than it was before. And this is a huge, huge improvement, especially if you're working with a lot of VDBs. What else is new in this latest version of 3D Light? Uh, let me show you uh, this new scene. I have uh, basically just an HDRI in my environment light, and then I just have a simple box with basic UVs and normals applied to it, okay? So this is what we have. We basically, you know, it's, it's this kind of, I don't know, like uh, tiled, dirty tiles sort of texture that I grabbed from Quixel Mega Scans. So um, one of the cool things about 3D Light is that you can use displacement maps with hardly any hit on the render time. So here we have the displacement texture and I go from the out color into the displacement normal 
bump value and then uh, I'm gonna change this from normal to displacement. In this particular case, I know that it's zero, zero centered. A lot of the Quixel Mega Scans textures are zero, zero centered as opposed to 0.5 centered. So keep that in mind if you're using a lot of displacement maps from Quixel Mega Scans. But anyway, uh, I'm just gonna hit render. I have like a pre uh, 0.1 value, but I think it's uh, fairly realistic. For this particular texture so you can see now that we have displacement um, happening on our model and it's really really cool i also downloaded uh, the normal map from the quixel megascans site so i'm going to plug the normal map into here and now going back into the principle i have to change this to a normal map uh, here i think it's direct x so now i'm just going to hit render and let me just kind of make this a lot more obvious so we can see a little bit what the normal map is doing okay so you can see what the normal map is doing i mean it's not really adding any geometry so all of our edges are very very flat however it's given us the illusion that there's more kind of uh, displacement happening into our texture so the cool thing about normal maps and bump maps is that sometimes they're very, very good with what I would call high frequency detail, okay? So those are teeny tiny little creases and uh, uh, little grains and little imperfections on the surface. And they can come in really, really handy for that type of stuff. Where displacement maps can be really, really useful for a little bit more um, pronounced sort of uh, imperfections, okay? So the problem with 3D Light has been that if you wanted to use both of them at the same time, you really couldn't because in the principal shader, you were either having to pick displacement or normal or bump. You couldn't pick more than one, okay? So I'm just gonna zero this guy out. As a matter of fact, we can just disconnect it completely. And I'm gonna show you this really cool node that was uh, introduced in a recent version of 3D Lite that I really, really like that solves this problem. So the node is called a displacement node. Look at this. And for those of you guys that have seen uh, the terminal and saw that there was this displacement input but never knew exactly what to do with it, now you do because this guy plugs right in here. Okay, so let me show you the displacement node and what it does. So I'm gonna start with plugging the displacement texture and we have different inputs here. Uh, we have a vector for vector textures, which is really, really cool. So, um, you know, uh, unfortunately they're like a relatively new thing and I haven't been able to really find a cool example of a vector displacement, but I'm gonna keep my eyes open and I'll show you how cool vector displacements can be very, very soon. But we do have a scalar set of inputs and we have a bump normal maps and then of course we have UV coordinates. So our displacement is going to go into the scalar uh, displacement right here. Okay, and uh, let's go under the scalar setting and I'm just going to set the scalar, uh, let's set it to 0.1 just like what we had in our principled and I'm going to hit render. And what we should see here is we have our nice displacement back on our model. So this is where this node comes in really, really handy because now we can also plug our normal texture. And I'm just gonna go from the out color into the normal bump value. And I'm gonna click on the bump normal uh, tab and I'm gonna set this to direct X and uh, intensity might be a little bit too hot. Let's do like 0.5 for our needs. And I'm just gonna hit render and bring this guy over here. And you'll see now that we have both normals and displacement applied to our object. And this is huge because, as I said, you couldn't really do it very easily with uh, 3D Lite in the past, and now you can thanks to this new displacement node. As always, you can go to 3dlight.com to download the latest version of 3D Lite, which uh, as of today, the 9th of February, it's on 2.4.3. Um, you can get like the free 12 core license per customer, which is really, really cool and super nice of those guys. Or you can pay for the unlimited multi-core version. And as always, please consult the change log before you download a version because you will notice that 3 Lite is built to work with very specific production builds of Houdini. So always check on the change log just to make sure that you're running the same version of Houdini as is required by 3D Lite. Of course, there are a ton of other 
optimizations and bug fixes and all sorts of cool new functions that are being built in 3D Lite under the hood besides what I just showed you today. Uh, keep checking back on their website because the developers are really good at updating 3D Lite at least once a week sometimes, even more often than that. I mean, as a matter of fact, sometimes I have a hard time just keeping up with the latest version of 3D Lite. It's a really excellent rendering engine, it's fast, and I have a pretty good word that they are working on some additional optimization and a brand new render engine coming up in the future that's gonna make it even faster if you can imagine that. So it's really, really cool, I really dig 3D Lite, and it's getting so well integrated with Houdini, as you saw from like the viewport render, which is really, really huge. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.